I'm reading a fellow by the name of Kerry Max Cook, who spent uh, 22 years on Texas death row for something he didn't commit. It actually started when I was in the ninth or 10th grade. Me and my friends would, you know, act like we were going to school and then run out the back door and start looking for a car with the keys in it. And I had the misfortune that one of the cars that I stole in my adventures to conquer the world happened to be the sheriff's deputy's car. And I wrecked it. <clears throat> Driver's ed I hadn't taken yet. And make a long story short, the deputy he beat me up for it, and, and that was pretty much it. After that, any robbery, any broken window, any cat up a tree, everything was just my fault as far as that sheriff was concerned. And then, well, fast forward, and I'm, um, I'm 19. I'm at this apartment complex in Tyler, Texas, called the Embarcadero. There's a swimming pool there. It's where all the hip people hang out. And I was an attractive, attractive guy. I dressed real nice. It was the 70s, you know, man. I bought my clothes from the hippest place, like the Gap. I had my hair styled real long, platform shoes, bell bottoms. I looked tight. And uh, I was walking towards the swimming pool there, and there was this beautiful, gorgeous girl, man, just nude and fondling herself right there in the window. And I look, so I look up and I go, oh my God, man, wow. Because I'd lived a very sheltered, naive life. I had never even been to a strip club before and I'm seeing this total, complete, mature woman. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah, that is cool, man. So anyway, a couple of days go by and I'm back at the pool and there's this chick laying out there. Make a long story short, we start talking. I told her I was a bartender in Dallas. Of course, I was working at a gay bar, but I didn't tell her that. Because I'm just stretching everything. I want to be all that plus a bag of potato chips. Anyway, we ended up going back to her uh, apartment. And uh, we, uh, you know, we made out. But not all the way. I was in there for about... 30, 45 minutes, whatever. And I, I, I got cold feet because she was just so aggressive and I left. And I didn't ever see or hear from her ever again until I'm arrested for her murder three months later in August of 1977. See, the prosecution had said that they had found an expert fingerprint technologist who would testify that he had found one of my fingerprints on her door frame and he said that he would narrow the time element of the leaving of those fingerprints. But you can't date or time a fingerprint. It's scientifically impossible. And their fingerprint guy wasn't an expert technologist. His knowledge of fingerprints at that point was a six-month correspondence school. And that judge let them say all through my trial that I left that fingerprint there at the time of her murder. And this, this next part has all been hidden for 20 years. Linda, the victim, had been having an affair with Dr. Whitfield, a professor of sciences over at the university, and everyone had just found out about it. He was fired from his job, lost his wife, lost his kids, a whole big mess. And her roommate, Darla, had seen somebody in the apartment the night of the murder who she said had silver hair, medium short, touching the ears, fashion, wearing white tennis shorts. That, 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 that's Whitfield. In her police report, Darla says she sees Whitfield in the apartment that night and says, don't worry, it's only me, and goes to bed. But at the trial, she turns around and says, that's the man right there, and points at me. And my lawyer didn't even argue with that. My court-appointed attorney was a former DA who jailed me twice before. He was paid $500, and in Texas, you get what you pay for. And you know, at a capital trial, the prosecutors always say, he's dangerous, he's a maniac, he's a sick, twisted murderer, but I'm no different from you. I mean, I wasn't a street thug. I wasn't trash. I came from a good family. If it happened to me, man, it can happen to anyone. So, uh,
They accused me of being a murderer. Uh, they accused me of being a homosexual. And that got into the media. And that got to death row even before I got there. So in prison, uh, I was, uh, I had three guys pull a train on me, and they raped me, and they sodomized me, and they carved good P-U-S-S-Y on my behind. And it's there, it's a, uh, it's cut so deep I can't, the plastic surgery won't remove it. It's not like it's a tattoo. And uh, I attempted suicide a couple of times with this whole little war I was fighting in there on the one hand with the criminal justice system. And then on the Western Front, I'm fighting with the fear of my life with these inmates every day.